Welcome to a new edition of What's on the Horizon. I'm Lori Scherenbrock here with Chris Shooker of Digital Horizons. Welcome. Um, today I want to talk about like DVDs versus streaming versus any of that. Is, is it worth it to keep any of my DVDs around? Should I just throw everything in the trash and just go Netflix it? Is that what I should do? Yeah, so it... We, we live in a world where convenience is paramount, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so what we refer to as physical media, CDs, DVDs, phonographs, tapes, those like they're all, they have relevancy at, at varying different levels. The difference that those things, that physical media provides is it's a superior experience, hands down. Um, so where, where streaming provides convenience and accessibility, it lacks in audio and video quality. And the primary reason is a, a technical, something called compression. Hmm. And so when the movie sits on Netflix's servers and it has to make it to you, that takes up a lot of bandwidth. It takes up a lot of that internet pipe to get it to your house. And as you might be aware, Netflix is a company that likes to make money. And the more they have to pay in bandwidth costs, which is astronomical, by the way, um, the less money they make, right? So they employ something called compression, which takes the original whole movie and shrinks it down so that it's smaller. And as you might be aware, whenever you want to make something smaller, what... What do you do to make something smaller? You eliminate unnecessary things or try to get rid of, I don't know, trim the fat, I guess. You, you, you take stuff out. Yeah. So if you have a gallon of water and you want to fit a, a gallon of water into a cup, what do you do? You lose a bunch of water. Now mm -hmm. you just have a lot less water. So in, in digital content, movies and whatnot, compression means loss of audio and video quality. Huh. There are ways of, of doing compression that result in less loss. But when we're talking a movie that starts out filmed in and with $500,000 million cameras and goes through levels of audio engineering that nobody, even myself, can comprehend, and you try to fit that down the internet, it just, it would, the internet would explode. Huh. So they shrink it down and it can be as much as like 97% compression to get it to a state that you see in your house versus the original. Now, what you're seeing from Netflix and those types of things, like you can get very good audio video quality, but if you're really trying to utilize even a most basic system all the way up to a, like an actual performance installation, a nice theater, you're doing that equipment a disservice by only streaming your content. The I, I love car analogies because people understand cars, right? We've had cars our whole life. It's it, A lot of the concept about cars makes sense. So I try to use analogies like that. And the analogy I use in compression versus physical media is a high performance vehicle. Let's say you, you bought a Porsche 911 mm. and you wanna drive that car like the $100,000 bill it puts you back for, right? Why wouldn't you? You know, right. you fast. Yeah. So what you don't do is you don't go put 87 octane gas in the engine, right? You buy 91, you buy 93, yeah. you get racing fuel, whatever it's capable of handling. Yeah. And then you drive it on a good road, right? You take, you, you don't, you don't drive it through the potholes down the industrial park road. You're, you're on a, maybe a racetrack or at least sure. a highway because you want to let that car work, Right. You might even, you might want to see an expert drive the car. So you, you have, you know, professional driver, whatever. So the, the comparison is taking that 911 and, and streaming is like putting 87 octane engine fuel in the tank. It's, it's putting a bad driver behind the wheel. It's driving it through the potholes and it, it's, it's, you're throwing that money away because you're not feeding it what it needs to work at its at its peak performance. 
And that's why physical media is so vastly superior is while there is still compression on say a Blu-ray disc, but when you're talking about the capacity of a Blu-ray disc being 50, 75, 100 gigs of space, there's significantly less compression required and the end result is vastly superior audio and video for your system, regardless of, of the performance of it. So you're giving up the convenience and I completely get that. I stream a lot of content, but when I want to actually enjoy it and be critical and really appreciate the money that I've spent on my system, I'm not streaming content, I'm, I'm playing physical media. And that applies to CDs to a lesser extent because they there are some really good compression algorithms for music and we're talking about significantly less space for audio than for you know ultra high definition movies sure. and whatnot. Um, but that's that's the comparison. So thinking back, I don't even know how long really, but you know when when Blu-ray first came out, I mean if you have a choice between getting like just the DVD or the Blu-ray, which which one is better? Oh, Blu-ray by, by, it's not even comparable. Like a, a, a Blu-ray disc at minimum has the, like 10 times or more the capacity for information. And that allows them to put higher resolution movies. You get uh, higher quality audio in the form of DTSX or Dolby True HD or Dolby Atmos. Um, you often get more extra features. I mean, it's, yeah, it, it's a it's it's Blu-ray hands down, um, and then there's there's separate versions of of Blu-ray. You can have just regular Blu-ray, which can be up to 1080p resolution, or you have Blu-rays that that actually have 4K resolution, and and you would want that, of course, if it's if it's available. And does the system you push it through make any difference? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it, it's. Um, like with anything, if, if again, using the car analogy, yeah. if you have the same octane gas, let's say a 93 octane, and you have a Toyota Corolla versus a Porsche 911, the Porsche, of course, is going to better utilize that fuel. So if you have a better system, it's definitely going to utilize that, that content better than, than just, say, a TV standing alone or something like that. I love that. That, that really does make it like more crystal clear what it is. And so, you know, the next time you see the commercial where it says, hey, Game of Thrones available on its boxed set, like that's what you should do, right? Buy the box set versus going back to HBO and doing it again, you should get the box set. Well, hopefully you can buy the box set with only seasons one, two, three, four, and five. Agreed. And you and you can you can ignore six, seven, and eight. <laughs> Hands down. <laughs> well, there is no there is no quality the that can save season six, seven, and eight. <laughs> I completely agree with you. It's like it's like just stopping at that book too. Like just just don't go any further than that. You're fine. And and he's never gonna finish the books anyway. So oh. I'll just stop where you where you were there. Or Jon Snow. <laughs> Poor John Snow. I agree. I agree. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. That was really um, enlightening. I think, you know, most people think, oh, streaming is the best, the most high quality. But when you put it, you know, and to bring that up, I mean, I imagine that's why people don't understand why Netflix keeps hiking their price. Plus, they want to make money. But like you said, if that cost is astronomical, that's probably something that the, the average layperson doesn't understand about that service, too. So here, here's kind of a, a cool fact about how Netflix works is they they are so cost conscious of the of the bandwidth that they're using, they'll take and load servers with their content and give them to ISPs, your service providers, so that it's closer to the people that are going to mm -hmm. utilize it. So they take and update those servers and those movies will sit on a very, very, very protected server. And so then instead of it branching out from Netflix and going everywhere, it's only coming out from the provider to the home. So the pathway that has to exist, which it, obviously it benefits Netflix, but then it also benefits the provider too, because they're not having to waste so much of their uplink 
to get it from Netflix before it goes out to the consumer. It's already on their own internal distribution point going to our, you know, yours and my home to, to watch. So sure. yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. We, we have a, a, a neat kind of unofficial partnership with a local telecommunications provider in town here called CTC. And they're absolutely amazing. If you can get internet and TV through them, there's, there is no better option all the way around. And it's, it's kind of fun to learn about some of those behind the scenes things that they, they deal with because they're, you know, they're an ISP and I, I didn't know that. It was kind of fun learning that. And I imagine that's probably why Netflix will retire certain movies or shows is it's because they're making room on their bandwidth for yeah. new things. Yep. It's not necessarily a demand issue. It's a, it's a band. It's as simple as it's a bandwidth issue. Sure. Yep. Okay, cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for that. I'm looking forward to our next chat.